welcome to Azure Data Explorer Shorts. I'm Vincent with the Azure Data Explorer team. And today we're going to talk about query performance results cache. Previously, you might remember we talked about cache policy and how the Azure Data Explorer system caches the latest data so it can be queried very fast. But this is not what we're going to talk about today. What we're going to talk about is the feature where we can explicitly say to Custo, cache the query for a given time. So let's experiment there. Here I'm using the help cluster, which is available publicly, and I'm going to use the storm events table. We won't get too deep in the data today, it's just important to realize that there's a column called event type with a low cardinality discrete values, heavy rain, tornado, etc. So what we're going to do here is join the table on itself using an inner join. So this is not as bad as doing a cross product, but it's getting pretty close because the event type column has low cardinality. And that's what we want. We want something slow and hard to compute and a bit more insulting for the engine. We're going to do a count after that for state. Let's run this query. Okay, close to 24 seconds to run. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the query again, just to validate that Custo doesn't cache results. It caches the data itself, the raw data, but doesn't cache intermediary results. If I run this thing again, it should take about the same time. close to between 23 and 24 seconds again. Okay, now what I'm going to do is explicitly mention I want you to cache this thing. So I'm going to do set query results cache max age and I'm going to give it like five minutes. So I'm going to say cache that for five minutes. Now because I run it for the first time with a cache, it needs to compute the query again. Okay, so again, 23 seconds. But now if I run this query again, Boom, 0.1 second. And if I look at the stats, it took zero CPU. Basically just return again. If I run it again, same thing. But if I would run that, just this, without taking the SID query, then I would be up for 23 seconds again. So what's happening here is that when I add this option, this query results cache max age, it caches the result of the query on the node executing the query. And if it sees the exact same query body and it really looks at the text over here, it looks at this thing. If I, if I put a space over here, if I run this again fast, if I put a space here, not so fast. And this is what's happening. But now I have cached this, this query with the space. If I run it again, super fast, and I already cached the other one. So pressing it also. Finally, I can see the cache used on the database node. I say show database cache query results. I'll see my cluster has two nodes. You'll see that the first node has used zero bytes of cache. The other one has used three KB of cache. So why is the first node? Well, the only one. Actually, that's an, a question for advanced user. You might wonder why is there one and not the other, since I seem to have done quite a bit of queries. So if it would be round robin, I would have fallen into two servers. Let me give you a tip. Okay, if I run a show cluster and I look at my cluster and I looked at the com a column is admin, I can see that node 001 is admin. And my hint is that this is not a coincidence with the previous result. If you know the answer why, write it down below in the comments. Now, what's obvious for everyone is caching for performance. That's obvious. A cache result comes faster, so it has better performance. What is slightly less obvious is caching for scaling. So let me demonstrate that because I've had this argument over the years of an array of different technologies involving caching. So let's look specifically for Azure Data Explorer. Let's say we have a timeline. Uh, let's say those little tick bars are for minutes. Let's say I'm testing that, I'm developing a query or a dashboard or something. I do a first query the first minute. I do another one later on and I do a third one. It's fantastic. It performs okay. Great. Tap yourself on the back. You're done. Put that into production. Now something to realize, you're going to 
get it run an infinite number of queries in parallel. It won't just degrade, it will actually get throttled. One of the limits that you'll hit is that you have a limit on concurrency. In general, it's the number of cores you have per node on your SKU times 10. So if you have like 16 cores, you'll have a maximum of 160 queries you can run in parallel. So it depends on the number of cores you have on your, there might be other reasons why you get throttled. It might be a workload group. It might be a policy. It might be something else, but you'll get throttled. Let's say, let's assume for the argument that I have maximum three degree of concurrency. That's very low, it's just for an example. Okay, so I get three lines here, looks like a music partition. We're ready to do music. So let's start to get the queries and we're in production. So I'll get a first query, I get another query. It's cool because that happens after the first one completed. So I'm still in the first slot of queries. And I got another query in the second minute. And I now have a concurrent query. So it happens at the same time in the first one. As, as the first one is not completed, the second one starts. And a third one. Now in the real world scenarios, those queries would interfere with each other. They would probably take slightly longer to run because they consume the same resources. Let's assume for simplicity of the argument that they don't and they all take the same time. I have another query a bit later on, so I have time on my first slot, and my second slot, and my third slot, and I'm okay. But now you can see I start to challenge the system. I start to load the system. Not overloading yet, but it's taking its toll. So now I have more queries coming in, and suddenly, boom, this last query will get throttled because I don't have space anymore. Again, in the real world scenario, that wouldn't be like three slots, it would be like 160, probably more if you have a higher skew, but it's not an infinite value. You cannot run infinite number of queries in parallel and you get throttled. So what does query result caching help in this case? Well, it does reduce the time. So here every, let's say I cache for one minute. Let's assume that as long as the first query in a minute hasn't completed, I still have to compute the entire query. The other ones are very fast because they just return the query. So they can actually run sequentially on the first slot. And that, that's good for scaling because then I can run more queries. I can hammer my system with much more queries because they run much faster. So we just wanted to stretch that point because sometimes people don't realize that performance and scaling can sometimes walk hand in hand. Obvious question, when should we cache results? When should we do that? First, it's important to realize the semantic. We have to explicitly say set cache results. So it's not something that we usually do when we do ad hoc queries. And for good reason, why would you cache something ad hoc that won't repeat? Usually you would do that in a dashboard where the users have identical queries. Let's say you have a dashboard with a KPI or a graph or something. Every users in the organization have identical queries. So it's not filtered by their user group or department or whatever then it makes sense to cache the result and then you'll achieve better scalability. Similarly, in an application where you have the same thing, you have the same query, maybe you have a dashboard in the application, makes sense. Of course, you'll do that and you'll size the cache window according to the ingestion frequency. So let's say you ingest every five minutes. It makes sense to cache your result for a few minutes because the result of a query won't be different because the data won't be different within five minutes time frame. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comment section. Otherwise, you can follow us on those different social media platforms. And until next time.